So, thank you for coming. My name is Marvin Rotran. I'm a former counselor in this borough. Four years ago, the borough installed a bike path right here on Terrebonne. It severely inconvenienced St. Monica's Church, as well as local schools. It provoked enormous protests from residents. The borough quickly realized that the bike lane was disruptive, and within a month, the council voted to remove it. The bike lane was far less problematic than the one that was installed on Terrebonne this summer. If residents were angry four years ago, today they are furious. The entire traffic pattern of much of NDG has been changed. Terrebonne's now a one-way street in opposite directions from Cavendish. The number of cyclists has not augmented, while all the major disruptions noted in 2020 have reappeared. Residents believe that their borough mayor and council majority do not care what they think. One issue that regularly reoccurs in so many neighborhoods is how bike lanes have proliferated in Montreal. Indeed, it's not an exaggeration to say that the public is angry. The city rarely consult consults and the cost of hundreds of millions of dollars has created one of the largest bike path networks any major city in the world has and more net bike paths are plan planned for next year. We'll point out just here in NDG, there are three protected bike paths east-west, all within a couple of blocks of here. Two blocks to the north on Fielding. There's another protected bike path. Three blocks to the south on DeMays and Evans. And now the network beginning on the east-west streets. We're also beginning to hear complaints from people in Cote d'Anege. All sorts of bike lanes have been created. The local newspaper, The Suburban, had a piece or an article or a letter today but from a resident in Cotonège about a bike path that was created there that the resident claims no one uses but has removed parking in the area. There has been no discernible jump in the number of trips taken by bicycles as compared to other modes such as cars or public transit. While people say what people say is that most bike lanes are underutilized, create gridlock, make it more dangerous to drive, remove much needed parking, make it harder to sweep streets, and make it far more difficult for garbage trucks and emergency vehicles to move through streets that have become very narrow for vehicular traffic. Montreal is a winter city, and yet it has more kilometers of bike lanes than cities in tropical climes like Sydney, Australia, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, or Miami, Florida. It galls people to see year-round bike paths receive priority snow clearing when the city too often chided when its performance about its performance clearing sidewalks and roadways. Now, having said that, the public is not inherently against promoting cycling. It's just angry at how the city administration prioritizes the hardcore cycling community and imposes its agenda on entire unwilling neighborhoods. Montrealers increasingly see the municipality's programs on bike lanes as part of a strident anti-car ideology rather than part of a larger, multifaceted, coherent plan to facilitate the mobility needs of different user groups. Montreal has more than twice the number of kilometers of bike lanes that Toronto does. Yet evidently, the situation in Ontario's largest city has reached the boiling point. The provincial government of Ontario is considering legislating to limit municipalities' ability to create new bike lanes, to at least have some minimal rules of consultation. Given the unwillingness of the Plan administration to dialogue with angry communities, Given that we have, for the first time, progressed to lawsuits to halt bike paths, given that despite a difficult financial position that is obliging the city administration to belt tighten except for bike lanes, have we reached the point where the public needs to ask Quebec to emulate what the government of Ontario is considering? Next municipal election is a year away in November 2025. The harm we have witnessed witness that negatively impacts so many residents for so little positive gain will continue next year unless Quebec actually gives a voice to the voiceless. <laughs> At the very least, we need a dialogue. The pendulum has swung too far, and if the city is unwilling to understand the public discontent, it may well be time to approach the problem. Okay.